Well, it's been a while since we updated the uh, <clears throat> 1959 Axman Anderson here. Um, a week or so after the last video when we were talking about puffbacks and stuff, this thing experienced the largest puffback I've ever seen. It, I was walking towards the garage when it happened and I saw out of the corner of my eye, I saw it out of the chimney actually, but it was out of the corner of my eye, I just saw kind of a bright flash in the vicinity of the top of the chimney and um, <clears throat> you know I turned and looked and there was a large plume of fly ash coming out of the chimney and it was it was really loud and I checked it out I didn't see anything wrong like well it blew the uh, the bottom off of the uh, outside on the other side of the wall there it blew the, the chimney clean out off so I put that back on and you know an hour or so later the fire went out and I tried to relight it it wouldn't light I tried to relight it again it still wouldn't light <clears throat> so here we are it's like what three months later now I switched over to the Van Wert in the basement so that's currently heating the domestic hot water and stuff so we're okay. We're not we're not like out of hot water or anything. But today it's it's pretty chilly out. It's only going up into the low 60s today. And it's probably going to be in the high 30s or low 40s tonight. So I figured, ah, well it's a good time to take a look at this thing and we'll see if we can figure out what's wrong. So I tried to light it again and it would not light. <laughs> so I decided to pull the fan out. In the bearing box and uh, we're gonna that's the fan plate that's the old fan that's the new fan that we had sitting waiting until we took it apart so we're gonna put the new fan on we're gonna put a new gasket on the, the fan plate and probably stick it back together and see if it'll light after we look in here for a while it's kind of interesting that this has really since the last time I cleaned it, it has really accumulated a lot of crap. This was basically coating the, uh, the side walls of the swirl chamber here, and I was just, you know, knocking it off with this piece of bar stock here. It's, it's kind of difficult to get in there, so just whatever you got that's solid in, you know, a, a brush. Probably wouldn't wouldn't do it because stuff stuck on there pretty good. But anyway, we'll, we'll get this finished up and uh, vacuum it out a little bit, and um, then we'll stick it back together and see if it'll light. I mean, I don't see anything wrong with this fan. It seems a little bent. I don't know why that would make it not light though so the plan right now is to change this gasket clean the swirl chamber out then put this all back together with the new fan and then we'll try and light it again see what happens okay so here we are we got it all back together and it still doesn't seem to want to light, which is really weird. I'm trying to coax it along here a little better. There's a bunch of charcoal in there. I threw a bunch of peak hole on top of it. It's looking like there's a little progress now. Maybe it'll take off this time. But I did have a couple of stovepipe leaks, those big puffbacks kind of jostled my one end cap loose and it also pulled out some from where the uh, stovepipe goes in the thimble. 
But yeah, there's, there's a bunch of red under that coal there, and maybe it'll take off. The thing is, I don't hear it crackling. Usually when you hear it crackling, then you know that it's light in the anthracite. The cat's pretty jazzed about having the boiler in the garage going. Right, cat? Hmm. She says it's been months since this boiler's been going. I don't know what's going on here. So, she'll probably be happy tonight. If this thing actually lights. <laughs> there's, there's more activity going on in there. Look at that. It might go. We'll see. Okay. Looks like we were successful. It's lit. That is some lit up anthracite there. Now we just gotta put a load on it for a while. I'm gonna turn on big giant radiator here and I mean we don't there's not a lot to heat right now so I'll just turn on the radiator it'll probably get really hot in the garage but at least we'll know this thing works and it's it's ready to go for the next winter <laughs> all right okay so it's a few hours later and it, it hasn't really fully recovered yet, but it's going to. I think part of the problem is this rice coal. It's not really liking it that much. It took quite a long time for, for that there rice coal to light off. Now we have pea coal in there. I mean, I was hand feeding it some pea coal. And it's got pea coal in the bin, so really the rice coal is just whatever is left over in the doghouse and whatever is left over in the auger right now. But it's running, we're just kind of forcing along heat coal. That big giant radiator there is got its pump on. Plus, it's going to be heating the domestic water. There's a uh, domestic water for the indirect water heater call going on right now. So it has to satisfy that. And then we're going to do some dishes. Then we're going to do some more laundry. And then I'm going to take a shower. So I should put a, a good long load on it. See our fans running pretty quiet. Obviously, I put too much oil in the uh, bearing box. Important thing to remember about the bearing box is there are no seals for this shaft that runs through it. So if you fill the oil level up to that hole it's going to leak oil out when you start it up. But, I mean, the nice thing about it is it'll just spit the oil out. <laughs> and eventually, it'll reach its level that it wants to be at. Here's our bin situation here. That's the doghouse the auger goes into. And that's the peak hole. There's a ton of half peak hole over there. We're not going to run this for a real long time. Probably a few days, that's about it. Because uh, later in the week it'll probably be up to about 80 degrees and we'll just continue running the van work in the basement. But, for tonight, tomorrow, And as long as it looks like it's going to be chilly out, we'll run this.
it will uh, it'll heat the garage up pretty good. The cat will be happy. And uh, we'll get it exercised and get it to a steady state where it'll actually run normally. And th then we'll know everything's good. I was kind of concerned because, I mean, not being able to get the fire lit is kind of a pretty strange thing to have happen. So, I think what it was was a combination of the, the stove pipe coming half apart and the, uh, I don't know if the fan was a problem or not. Probably not. It should have still ran okay with that fan. But it's got a new fan on it now, new fan plate gasket, and we should be good to go.